I am especially thrilled with our next guest. This is a lady who helped to inspire me to do my videos, and she is truly one of America's great warriors who stands for our American freedoms and our national security. She is leading the charge against the Ground Zero Mosque in New York City. She is the founder of Stop Islamization of America. Please welcome Ms. Pamela Geller. First, I just want to tell you how moved I am by all of your service. Our freedom is written in the blood of those soldiers. God bless you and thank you. Yeah. Lloyd Marcus, you're a giant. You are a man among men. What you take to be yourself takes a spine of steel. I'm honored to follow you. I'm actually honored to be here. I, where are your pitchforks and your torches? <laughs> it's so interesting to me to look at this room, how brave you are, how brave you are in the face of a campaign of smear, defamation, libel, and destruction. And yet you come proudly. God love you. You will save this country. The greatest threat to civilization is the spread of the totalitarian philosophy. And the best ally is not the devotion of its followers, but the confusion, the confusion of its enemies. We are at war. Make no mistake about it. We are at war. There is a war on the truth. What is truth? Truth is the recognition of reality. Just telling the truth is a radical act because truth is the new hate speech. Where does this come from? The prosecution and persecution of those of us that speak against oppression, diminishment and dehumanization of women, Islamic law, this is blasphemy. What I do is blasphemy under the Sharia, under Islamic law. And in Muslim countries, the Sharia, under the Sharia, blasphemers always non-Muslims, are executed, they're assassinated. Here in America, your character is assassinated. You are smeared, you are libeled, you are defamed. You are ruined for telling the truth. It's so interesting to me to witness the movement of the Tea Party, millions of patriots coming out peacefully leaving the grounds cleaner than when they got there, you could eat off the street. Oh, that's true. Ignored summarily by the media. Ignored until you could not be ignored. Until hundreds of thousands marched in Washington. And then the smear campaign began. Now, I live in New York, and I can tell you this Occupy movement is the most destructive movement. You haven't seen it up close and personal. And let me tell you something, anybody that tells you these attacks, these sexual attacks on women, is purely, purely anecdotal, is a lie. Big, fat, giant lie. They've actually set up a tent today, a tent for the women, because of the sexual attacks and the rapes. 
Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Oakland, Occupy Boston, Occupy Florida is a virulently anti-American, anti-Semitic, anti-woman movement. And it's Obama endorsed. Obama endorsed. This is what he does. He's a community activist. The idea that if you poll Americans and the Tea Party is looked at as racist is purely a function of the media. And the polling on Occupation Wall Street is favorable. Why am I bringing this up? Because you need to know who the enemy is. The enemy is the media. Listen to me, listen to me closely. The enemy is the media and they're the biggest weapon that our adversaries have in their arsenal. Do not think for one second that they cannot deliver to Obama another term. I was there, I was researching Obama in 2007. I wrote a book called The Post-American Presidency, The Obama Administration's War in America. Everything was in there, everything. His relationship with Khalid al-Mansur when he was a failing student at Occidental. Where did he come to Khalid al-Mansur, a virulent anti-Semite who makes Farrakhan look like Mother Teresa? A virulent anti-Semite who's a senior advisor to Prince Walid. Where did he come to Khalid al-Mansur back then? So much the media, criminally negligent, corrupt, delivered to this nation. You have to be part of the new media. You have to. You have no choice. You say, what can I do? Plenty. Each one of you have friends. Each one of you play golf, play mahjong, go swimming, play bridge. I don't know what normal people do. I just work. <laughs> you have to send around articles that the media won't touch. My site, Robert Spencer's site, Jihad Watch. You must educate your friends. First learn everything, and then you educate your friends. You may ask, I don't understand why the left aligns itself with the Islamic supremacists in this country. For those of you that don't understand Islamic supremacism, let me define it. First of all, just so that you know, this is not a religious issue. It's couched as a religious issue because we hold religion in such a high regard. But what I address has nothing to do with who and what you worship. I don't care if you worship a stone. Just don't stone me with it. The masking of the workplace, the masking of the universities, the masking of the public school. What do you mean masking of the workplace? I'm glad you asked me that. You see lawsuits all the time, imposing Muslim prayer times on union contracts, forcing non-Muslim workers to lengthen their day. That's not fair. The Heinz Company, who's been notoriously generous with their Muslim workers, they have Muslim prayer rooms, they have Muslim prayer rugs, are now being sued. Sued for what? To stop the line. Stop the line for what? For Muslim prayer times. Why? They don't do that in Muslim countries. They don't do that in Iran. They pray before work or after work. So why do that? To impose Islam on the secular marketplace. This is what they do. The Disney Company is being sued. Being sued because an employee who worked there for a couple of years wants to wear the hijab. So Disney, trying to accommodate the Muslim workers, said, okay, but there is a uniform here. Since 1957, Disney is known for its dress code. What could be more iconic of America than Disney? She said no. She's suing Disney. Walmart cashiers, Target cashiers, will not handle meat that's not halal. Don't work at Target. Don't work at Walmart. They sued and they won. You have a president who is using the Department of Justice to impose Sharia. He sued a New Jersey town where a correction officer wanted to wear the hijab, the niqab. They said, look, you have to wear a uniform. It's a correction facility. Obama sued, Obama won. A teacher, a teacher, a new teacher, a math lab teacher, requested a month off to go on Hajj. The Hajj, you can go on, by the way, is a once in a lifetime trip, yes? Once in a lifetime, she, she wanted a month off, the school said, you're our only math lab teacher, you can't do it. The Department of Justice sued the school district, they settled, the school district has to pay $75,000 and legal fees. 
We are seeing this repeatedly. Even this conference, even the media on this conference, if you've, watched, if you've read the media, it's, it's taken from a Hamas-linked CARE press release. Now, there was some controversy about CARE. I would not appear with Hamas here. I wouldn't. I will not legitimize the enemies of freedom. They have no problem speaking. They speak everywhere. They bully hotels like Hyatt Place and, 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 and the Hutton Hotel to cancel me, to cancel my events. And they cave. Why do they cave? Because the hotels are more afraid of them than on canceling on us. That has to change. When these things, that's why you have to read Atlas and, and Jihad Watch. When these things happen, you have to make that call. You have to make, you have to make their life hell. The Islamic supremacists do. The litigation jihad, the litigation jihad is they sue anyone that speaks truthfully, candidly about Islam. That is blasphemy. That is blasphemy. I was sued for $10 million. I was sued for $10 million by Rivka Barry's attorney. Does anyone know who Rivka Barry is? Show of hands, not many, I'll, very briefly. Rivka Barry was a teenager in Ohio who converted out of Islam into Christianity and hid it from her parents for four years. At 17 years of age, her mosque, the Noor Mosque in Ohio, spied on her, found out she converted out of Islam, told her parents her father threatened to kill her. Now we know, under the Sharia, that apostasy is punishable by death. Thousands of apostates have been murdered across the world. Thousands. We're seeing a spike in honor killing here in America. She ran away. So it was funny because some of her friends sent me the article because they know I cover this stuff and they were afraid. And I said to Spencer at the time, I said, you think she got out? You think she made it? He said, they never get out alive. So imagine my joy when I saw her in Florida, when she showed up in Florida. Had to turn herself over because the whole country was looking for this girl. The whole country was looking for this girl to return into the deadly household. Meanwhile, there are millions of girls who run away that are pimping, doing drugs, the whole nine yards, no one's looking for them. This little virgin, a straight A student, the whole country's looking for to return her to the deadly household. So I became a very public advocate for her. So what happened? Yeah, I did. Very. What happened was, the parents, Muslim attorney, sued me for defamation of $10 million lawsuit. Why not like a hundred million? Or why not a billion? Well, these are the Obama's numbers, right? Just throw them around. <laughs> years I fought, years. And if it wasn't for my lawyer's uh, pro bono work, I don't know what I would have done. It cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Of course, when it was my turn for discovery, because he had ties to Hamas link care, he dropped the case. But this is how they shut people up. They sue us, and they have millions. Millions. The litigation jihad. The work jihad. The U.S. Treasury Department is giving seminars in Sharia finance. You are taxpayer dollars. Now, you, what's wrong with Sharia finance, Pamela? I'm glad you asked me that question. <laughs> Sharia finance, halal finance, must be halal. Meaning you can't invest in pork or alcohol or tobacco and some forms of entertainment. Well, those are whole American industries. Do you want your taxpayer dollars going to starve whole American industries? Oh, and 2.5% has to go to Zakat, Islamic charity, which in many instances is jihad. We're in trouble. I'm telling you we're in trouble. You have a Department of Defense who will not speak of jihad, who will not speak of Islamic terrorism. In the final report issued by the Pentagon on the Fort Hood Jihadi, he was a man who came out as a jihadi on Grand Rounds. He made a PowerPoint presentation on jihad, was wearing the garb of the Shaheed the morning of his jihad, was giving out Qurans the morning of his jihad, was screaming Allah Akbar as he mowed down our soldiers, 13, one was pregnant, 14. Allah Akbar means what? Means Allah is greater. Greater than what? Greater than your God. It's all supremacist. And yet, in the final report issued by the DOD and the Pentagon, they refused to name or speak to religious motivation. And here you have Obama 
killing Admiral Lockie. Now, I know who Admiral Lockie is, and I am not sorry that he's dead. But can someone explain to me something? He never killed anybody. He was the Fort Hood Jihadi's imam. So he goes in and kills a guy who is preaching, preaching jihad, yes. But the guy that committed jihad not only is still getting his check, and the two policemen that, that took him down were fired for budget cuts. But the Obama administration is withholding evidence. They can't bring the case to trial. That's why uh, the Fort, Fort Hood Jihadi Hassan, that's his name, Hassan, his lawyer left the case. Signed by the Obama administration. In the largest terrorist funding trial in our nation's history, the Holy Land trial, 300 groups were named as unindicted co-conspirators in the largest Hamas funding trial. Largest. CARE, ISNA, ICNA, NATE, all these organizations are in the White House. They are dictating to the media. The media runs their press releases. I mean, the media on this conference was, was vile and dishonest and a lie. Finer, a finer group of people I have never met. But the Bible says, woe to those that call good evil and evil good. Well, there's a lot of woe coming down the pike, I can tell you that. The schools, they're disarming our children. They're instituting Islamic curriculums, whitewashed, scrubbed, of the over 1,400 year history of jihadi wars, land appropriations, cultural annihilations, and enslavements. Nothing in there. Hundreds of millions of victims. 80 million Hindus alone. Even now, since 9-11, there have been close to 20,000 Islamic attacks across the world. Each one with the imprimatur of a Muslim cleric. Each one with a mosque behind it. And we can't talk about it. According to the latest survey conducted by Dr. Mordechai Qadar and David Yerushalmi, over 80% of the mosques in America are teaching, preaching, or advancing jihad. By the way, this confirms two previous surveys. What's being done about it? Obama removed Islam and jihad from all terror training materials and has caved to Hamas link care in removing the best scholars on Islam from talking to law enforcement and FBI and, uh, you know, CIA, so on and so forth. Uh, Ibn Warwick, uh, Robert Spencer, uh, Bacheor. The children are being disarmed. Our law enforcement is being disarmed. You have to wake up. The reason why I wrote this book is because you need a guide on how to fight this war. It's a stealth jihad. It's a sinister jihad, and anybody that talks about it is a racist, Islamophobic, anti-Muslim bigot. <laughs> they will go after you with fangs. They have done everything in their power to destroy my reputation, and they've emulated and, and, and uh, imitated the left. This is what the left does. The left renders our best people radioactive. Why isn't Sarah running? Why isn't Sarah running? They say because she's not electable. Well, first of all, I don't believe that. But who did that? Now what are they doing to Herman Cain? What are they doing to Herman Cain? It, it galls me that we had a president, and if there are children in the audience, I'll try and keep it clean, that dropped his pants, told Paula Jones to kiss it, raped Juanita Broderick, sexually attacked Kathleen Wiley, and I won't even go into the cigar. John Edwards was having a wild affair while his wife was dying from cancer. The Inquirer was writing all about it, not a word from the media, until she gave birth and he was in the room and someone gave a snap of a cell phone pic. And they can't even identify what Cain did. I can tell you this, I've been in the workforce since I'm a kid, since I'm 16 years old. I didn't know that I was sexually harassed every day. You know, guys say, hey, you look really great today, baby. I should have said, huh? They're trying to destroy Herman Cain. They are afraid of Herman Cain. I believe that. Because they'll try and play the race card. You can't. First of all, he's a real African-American. Obama is not. Slaves. Who knows what Obama's descended from? I mean, really? You read the immigration file on his father. 
It was a forced marriage. I mean, seriously, this was all in my book. And it does make a difference. People say, oh, you think he's a secret Muslim. Listen, don't get hung up on stupidity. It doesn't matter. That's not the question. The question is, if he was or he wasn't, what would he be doing differently? Nothing. He's absolutely Islamophilic. He is. I think what's going on across the world is the most dangerous course that the globe could possibly be on. Let me say a couple things about that Arab Spring. And if I'm talking too long, somebody needs to tell me I don't know. Alrighty. Iran. Iran was the only Arab Spring. I know, I covet it every day. I was the only one except for the Huffington Post. I was getting tweets from Iran, people that I never heard from again, like Persian Kiwi. Why was that a real revolution? First of all, everybody was in the street. Men, women, children, lipstick, eyeliner, high heels. It was a woman's revolution. They even held signs, Obama, you're either with us or against us. Iran is the head of the snake. Iran is the head of the snake. If you were to cut the snake, the head of the snake off, Hezbollah, which is a proxy of Iran, attacked our Marine barracks in 83, killed 241 of our Marines. Remember that? Sure you do. Took our uh, embassy hostage. They are Hamas. They are funding the Taliban in Afghanistan. They're making love to Chavez and Castro too. This is the head of the snake. You cannot imagine the trajectory you would be on if you had reacted the way you reacted to Egypt. Egypt? The only Muslim country to sign a peace accord with Israel? Egypt? Mubarak? I mean, to throw him away with both hands like that? That was no accident. How do I know that? Because concretes. We only deal in con concretes. He invited the Muslim Brotherhood to his speech in Cairo, his submission speech in Cairo in June of 2009, June 4th. They were outlawed. They were banned. Sheikh Karadawi was banned, lived in Qatar. Worked with Al Jazeera, Terra TV, which I'm sure you're now all seeing on your broadcast channels. That's a camera with a gun. That's what Al Jazeera is. Pure propaganda. You are being manipulated. You are being lied to, to, to throw Egypt away. I mean, and I had gone to Israel. I had gone to Israel uh, in the last week of August to dedicate a grove of trees to the victims of honor killings in the West. Because that's going on too, you just don't hear about it. Muslim girls that are murdered by their families. Dearborn, they have a, they have a lawsuit against them. Dearborn law enforcement for covering up honor killings. Here in Florida, I was rallying a few months back for Fatima Abdullah. Fatima Abdullah, a, uh, a Muslim woman who was serially beat and abused by her family. She told her neighbor her brother did things to her that were unspeakable, her word, not mine, was found dead. And they said she was, it was a suicide, that she committed suicide by banging her head against a coffee table. You can't commit suicide by banging your head against a coffee table. And when the Florida Family Association got pictures under a Freedom of Information Act request, there was no blood on that coffee table. But she was beat up good. So we called on uh, um, Governor Scott to please reopen it. We called on Pam Bonzi. We called, just reopen the case. Bring in a forensic a specialist. No. Then a source inside the medical examiner's office told us that they feared Muslim reprisals. So, you can commit murder, because that's preferable to offending Islam. This is how bad things have gotten. And I'm going to tell you it's very important who we elect. Very important. You have to elect guys like Ilario Pantana in North Carolina. I don't care if you don't live in North Carolina. Yes, big applause for Ilario. Yeah. Ilario Pantana, yes. And I'll tell you something else about politicians that court you, make love to you, and want you. What happens after you get elected? Hey, you better dance with the one that brought you. That's outrageous. That all of a sudden, when they don't want to be associated with the Tea Party, what they are doing is they are giving currency to the lie. Unacceptable. We must fight the big lie. You know what Hitler said? You tell the big lie often enough, it becomes the truth. That's what we're witnessing. And the left loves this movement. Now you say, why? Why do they love this movement? I mean, even I have to tell you, I'm confounded by my favorite group, which is Queers for Palestine. 
I see them at anti Israel events. You know what they do to queers in Palestine? They take a razor around their face and pull their faces off. They hang them from cherry pickers in Iran. But queers from Palestine are protesting Israel, the only true free light in that cesspool. Israel, who Obama has abandoned. So in Libya, he goes in. Libya? Back in March, I was writing, there were Al-Qaeda and jihadist elements in the opposition, and this was a bad idea. Now, if I knew, I had no special access, okay? None. In January, I knew that it was Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. If I know it, you're gonna tell me our intel agencies don't know this? He goes into Libya, and it, why? We didn't have a horse in that race. We didn't have oil in that race? Yeah, the French did. Who cares about, who cares about the French? <laughs> but we sent a billion dollars to Libya, and now in Tunisia, moderate Tunisia, who gets elected? The Islamic supremacists. This is a tsunami of Islamic supremacism, and we're not allowed to talk about it. I'm radioactive for telling the truth, for telling the truth. You cannot be afraid to tell the truth. I'm warning you. Our soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq, you ask anybody in the street, what are they doing there? What are they fighting? You know they can't answer you? It's not hard. It's jihad. It is the political system of Islam. Not the religious, nobody cares. And these curriculums that they're instituting in the children's schools, Governor Perry, it's why I, 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 I came out and said, you, he instituted this huge lesson program with the Aga Khan, complete dawah. Dawah in Islam is you must, that's a command, you must proselytize for Islam. Are you doing it for the Hindus? Are you doing it for the Christians? Are you doing it for the Jews? Are you doing it for the Sikhs? Why Islam? Why Islam? 9-11, they've instituted a 9-11 curriculum. A 9-11 curriculum, it took 10 years. A 9-11 curriculum, and it's all about service, and healing, and um, reconciliation. I don't know about you, but when I learned about December 7th, I learned that we were a, a, a nation united in our resolve to defeat the enemy. Uh, we weren't talking about service. It wasn't a day of service. Now service is a fine thing, but not on 9-11. This is what I'm teaching our children. No mention of the adversary. No mention of jihad. The Ground Zero Mosque. It is an Islamic pattern to build triumphal mosques on the cherished sites of conquered lands. The Dome of the Rock, the site of the first temple, Solomon's Temple, and the second temple, St. Sophia, the most exquisite, beautiful church in the world. Taj Mahal, tens of thousands of Hindu temples. Never in the history of Islam has there ever been a mosque built, a mosque of reconciliation and healing on the site of a jihadi attack. Don't spit in my face and tell me it's raining. That mosque is a big middle finger. I'm sorry. To the American people! The reason why the mosque is a very important case study is because despite the fact that President Obama largely supported it, and not only did President uh, Mayor Bloomberg support it, he colluded with the Ground Zero Mosqueteers. He filled out the paperwork under a Freedom of Information Act filed by Ju Judicial Watch. We saw the emails and the paperwork. But still, it's been defeated. And why? Public opinion. You must not be defeated. You must not question yourself. You are right and you are righteous. And what you represent is the basic founding principle of this country, the individual. This country was founded on individual rights. The first, the first government ever in the history of man based on that pre premise of individualism. And know that everything beautiful and noble and magnificent that we achieved was, was a logical fidelity to that principle. 
the enemy, and in the case of Islam and the uh, left, why does the left love Islam, the Sharia? Because it's the ultimate weapon of control. When you see the girls getting raped at Occupation Wall Street, Oakland, and so on and so forth, where are the feminazis? 96% of the girls in Egypt have been clitorectomized. Where are the feminazis? The honor killings, the diminishment of women, a woman's testimony under the Sharia is only worth a half of a man's. Where, where, is the, where, where, where are the feminazis? They're liars. They're so, first of all, I'm a male chauvinist, so let me just preface this by saying that. It's a Lenin Marxist dogma. How can you empower women on the one hand and then be demanding entitlements on the other? Make up your mind. So they abandon their own. They abandon their own. You see an occupation wall they're like, we want to handle these things ourselves. We want to handle the rapes ourselves. Hello? The setting, the setting of fires, the destruction of property. This is the sanction of lawlessness. This is the sanction of anarchy. Evil is made possible by the sanction that you give it. Withdraw your sanction. We have the battle of our lives in front of us, ladies and gentlemen. It grieves me that we don't have more young people in this movement. Maybe it's not chic, maybe it's not cool, um, but it's a problem. It's a problem because they've been brainwashed. They're not even taught cursive anymore in school, but they're taught climate change. Hello, climate changes. Next. That's why you got to promote homeschooling. Yes. And you, you have to volunteer. You have to volunteer for homeschooling. You have to help. This network, this country, the, the free world will be saved by the individual. If history has taught us anything, it's that the individual will change the course of human events. We know this. That's you. We have to build a new paradigm of disseminating information and news. The Ground Zero Mosque became a new story because of you. Because of you. I had been blogging about it in November 2009. Nobody talked, the media wouldn't touch it. As a matter of fact, the Times did report on it, and they loved it. They loved it. But it was in, on the blogs, and it was in the blogosphere that when we had our first rally, like 8,000, 10,000 people showed up, and you couldn't ignore it anymore. You did that. You sent it around. You made that a national news story and the number one international news story. Yeah. Very important. You must push back. There is a charter called the U.S. Muslim Engagement, and this is the charter for dimitude. Dimitude is the status of non-Muslims living in Muslim countries. They are denied basic human rights, and they have to pay a special tax. And that's when you're funding, I mean, you're funding the, the building of mosques across the world. Did you know that? That's called jizya. It's a poll tax exacted upon non-Muslims. That's why when the Ground Zero Mosque was named Qdoba, I, I choked. Qdoba is iconic of Islamic conquest over the West. In 7-Eleven, Muslim armies invaded Spain, which was a collection of Christian kingdoms. And the Christians and the Jews lived under Dimitude. They say, oh, it was a golden era. Yeah, it was a golden era for the Islamic supremacists, but not for the Christians and Jews who were denied basic human rights. The site of the first Jewish program and the second Jewish program, Qdoba. And you want me to like this? You want me to smile and say, yeah, interfaith dialogue. Interfaith dialogue goes one way. When they say, when you hear Imam Rauf say, I'm a bridge builder, read Sayyid Khatu. Bridge, a bridge builder in Islam, yes, you have to build a bridge one way to Islam. One way. You have to fight this. You have to, look, Michelle Bachman signed an anti-Sharia pledge. You have to reward her for that. When Herman Cain said some things that he said, uh, maybe he all worded it awkwardly. It's not that he wouldn't have a Muslim in his cabinet. He'd have Ayyam Hirshi Ali. He'd have Rafa Sultan. He'd have Ibn Warak. Oh, but he wouldn't have Nihad Awad of care. So they demanded, the Muslim Brotherhood in America demanded a meeting. They demanded a meeting. And he came out and said Muslims were uh, as, uh, as persecuted as Southern blacks before civil rights. 
We have to push back. What do they do? They muscled him. They muscled him. We have to push back. You cannot, you cannot be, you will be collateral damage. There are no observers in this war, none. So uh, in closing, I just want to say that 2012 is um, the line in the sand. We're en entering a very, very dark age. You may go to bed at night and say, I have a life insurance policy for my children, my grandchildren to take care of. Oh no, you won't like what comes after America. I wrote this book, I wrote this book so that you can understand how it's happening. It's all described in here. The masking of the workplace, the masking of the public school, the masking of litigation jihad, academic jihad, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood groups in America, and it teaches you how to fight the building of giant mosques in tiny neighborhoods. If it was a Lowe's or a Walmart or a church or a synagogue, they would never get the zoning that they get. But it's Islam. Oh! And this Islamophobia, this neologism, Understand that according to Abdul Muhammad, he said he was present in the bowels of Muslim think tanks at the International Institute of Islamic Thought when that word was created. He said it was a thought-crushing device to bash any criticism of Islam. And it's working. The Organization of Islamic Conference, the largest group of Muslim countries, in the UN, the largest body in the UN of only Muslim countries, 56 Muslim countries and the Palestinian Authority, has enormous, wielding enormous influence at the UN and the EU. That's why you see people persecuted for hate crimes. That's why they're firebombing a French magazine who ran a, a, a silly cartoon and the Danish cartoons. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation is the universal caliphate, modern day. And Obama is relinquishing American sovereignty to that body? You must stop this. You cannot be passive. Never give up. Never give in. Never surrender. Go on the offense. Fight back. Your life depends on it.